You have all the safety stuff. Well, you do. <clears throat> All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, November 7th, 2019. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Plenty of board members present tonight. We have our regular member, uh, Frank Underwood, also Sean Winston, Mike LaRue. Absent tonight is the vice chair, Nicole Fecto. We also have an alternate tonight, um, David Ross Lines, and Dave, you'll be voting tonight. We also have our uh, town planner here. We have our code enforcement officer, and we have our town planning technician slash webmaster slash uh, Facebook administrator slash concert promoter James here with us and various members of the public. I'd like to open up uh, the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner here in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about any issues that relate to the planning board. So please feel free to come forward. We also have a, a public hearing this evening as well. Public comment session is open. <coughs> once going twice all right seeing nobody come forward close the public comment session we'll also have another one at, uh, just before we adjourn the meeting tonight moving on to the approval of minutes for the october 17th meeting or october, october 3rd, 3rd. Me i'm sorry october 3rd meeting that would be the october 3rd meeting does that get Isn't corrected that on the agenda because it said september 19th did that get it well, we approved those. I think that was just a typo. That was just yeah. a typo. We did okay. approve those at the, at the October 3rd meeting. So. Okay. so so this would be the October 3rd minutes. We have two sets of minutes in here as well. You had something, right? Uh, just the only, only thing I saw was under the new business, the second paragraph there where it starts with Lou Chamberlain of Atar. So the well driller said it, it says a gravel well. Is that supposed to be... Shallow well. I'll go back to the tape. I think it okay. is gravel. I think he said yeah. gravel. Yeah. So. did. Okay. I'm 75% sure it's <laughs> 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 Seven, <laughs> Only 75%, James? <clears throat> that was the only question that I had. Sorry, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, no problem. I can it Anybody else? Frank? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. I'm good. All right, so the motion will be for approval of the minutes. I uh, move we approve the minutes for the October 3rd, 2019 planning board meeting. 
Okay. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? I'll abstain. I was not there. Okay. Moving on to the public hearing for the site plan review, school and parking expansion, 20 Blackberry Hill Road. It's the Hussey School, map R71, lot 27. It's in the R2 zone. The applicant is MSAD 60. This is a public hearing just to talk about this application only. Um, maybe we could just do a brief overview sure. and just talk a little bit about the project real quick, just a Cliff Notes version of the project, and then if anybody wants to come forward, we could come up for the um, public hearing. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, my name is Neil Raposo. I'm a civil consultant. Um, doing the civil engineering portion of this uh, project for SAD 60. Uh, the main portion of this project um, is alleviate a lot of the traffic and uh, parking issues that there are at the school currently, um, as far as drop off and pick up. Uh, this also uh, includes a future expansion of the school uh, that we've uh, approximated to the best of our ability on this site plan. We're going through and we're kind of taking a, uh, you know, a big picture approach at it and taking a conservative expansion of the school uh, compared to what we think may go in there. Uh, that separate firm is designing that portion of the building and they're still in the preliminary stages of getting the conceptual plan for that. So we've basically taken the biggest that we think they, they can go and uh, we'll be presenting that through the process uh, with this site plan. Uh, if any, any changes at all to that building beyond uh, what's described in our plan, we'll need to come back for uh, a site plan revision at that time. Uh, but for the most part, uh, this project is intended to, uh, like I said, improve the parking, uh, the entrances, uh, the traffic flow, the safety around the site, as well as uh, address a lot of the environmental issues that were have never been addressed to this point at that site. Uh, Department of en Environmental Protection has been working with us um, to implement as much as we can as, as practical on the site to, to improve uh, the, the quality of the water flowing off the site, as well as the groundwater recharge and a lot of the other uh, environmental impacts. So that's the okay. kind of keynote there. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody feel free to come forward to the podium for this public hearing. Since we didn't have the site walk, should we leave this public hearing open? Uh, it certainly can't hurt. Yeah. Um, if you plan on having the site walk at a later date. Yes. So. Yep, I would leave it open. Yeah. Should we consider a Saturday morning for a site walk? I mean, that's old, old days of the planning board. I mean, I mean when you run into this time of year, so. We're competing against daylight. A lot, you know, everybody here works. That is certainly a call you folks can make. So I know that you won't be here, but that's okay. I won't be here. The site is all staked out, if I'm correct. You know, driving by, you can see everything is pretty Correct, well yeah, delineated. Uh, yeah. All the stakes remain from the last uh, from the last site walk, and hopefully we can yeah, okay. convince the kids to stay away and leave them there until you know, we, we get the site walk completed. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and leave this uh, public hearing open so we don't have to notice it again. So, anybody want to come up? No. Okay. Um, Next on the agenda is Old Business Site Plan Review School and Parking Expansion, 20 Blackberry Hill Road, Hussey School, map R57, lot 27. It's in the R2 zone, and the applicant is SAD 60. Lee J. Um, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you provided a That's it. Okay. Um, so, yes, I've gone through the original memo with you previously. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I did provide you with an update um, upon the review of the information provided by Peter Heal, um, or Heil, um, third party engineer reviewing the stormwater design on behalf of the planning board. I'd offer the following synopsis for you um, based on um, his, his review. So under porous pavers, um, best management practice, the DEP BMP technical design manual, chapter 7.7, .7, also recommends installing a geotextile fabric 
to provide separation between the stone and existing soil, to prevent surrounding soils from migrating into the system and reducing its storage capacity. That is clearly something that I think we've talked about um, that when doing porous pavers, when if you don't maintain it correctly and you stop putting sand and salts into the pavement, it will clog. Um, and so they're suggesting, or the, uh, the third party engineer is su suggesting that a geotextile fabric be put in to separate them so that it will help it last longer. Existing wetland swale modifications to the existing swale may be necessary to meet the standards as the wetland swale is existing. We defer to the DEP to determine on whether the BMP meets the general standard treatment requirements. So basically, um, they're going to defer to DEP on that um, during the DEP's review and permitting of the project. Roof drip line filters, um, we defer to the DEP to determine on whether the general standard treatment requirements are being met. Mm -hmm. um, focal point systems, it appears the subsurface sand f fillers will meet the required general and flooding standards for the subcatchment areas, um, so they're satisfied with that. Subsurface and sand filters. It appears the subsurface sand filters will meet the required general flood standards for the subcatchment area. General uh, gravel wetlands. The gravel wetland appears to meet the required general and flooding standards for the subcatchment area. Um, so far, so good, Neil. <laughs> Um, erosion control. <laughs> erosion control. It is our recommendation to relocate the silt fence to above the outlet pipe and provide additional stone at the edge of the plunge pool to create a berm to trap sediment and to disperse runoff flows thinly across the slope to prevent channelization. The riprap apron pipe outlet detail should be revised to reflect the stone berm as well. Is the silt fence only during construction, or is there intended to be a silt fence there as a silt maintenance? Fence just during construction. Okay. Yeah. Everything else will be stabilized with the <coughs> wrap plunge pools. And Correct. Yep. Um, parking areas. While not directly associated with the stormwater treatment storage systems, due to the high groundwater table throughout the site, we would suggest looking into installing a perimeter under drain around the parking lots to drain high groundwater underneath proposed parking areas. We would also suggest looking into adding a geotextile fabric under the sub-base material to the typical pavement section detail. Uh, recommendation, I would recommend two conditions of approval when we get to that point based on this review. Um, one would be that the applicant complete the maintenance agreement for stormwater management facilities, Appendix 1, as part of the project approval and provide the annual stormwater management facility certification, Appendix 2, on a yearly basis to the CEO for the town's records. They do require it to go to DEP. Um, I'm suggesting we also have a record kept here in, in town hall. And two, the project obtain a site location of development, SLOD permit, um, and provide a copy um, to the town prior to the start of construction on the site. Again, they will get a copy of that permit for their purposes, and I would suggest we make sure we have one in our file because there will be a number of other standard conditions of approval that they'll have to meet, and we ought to have record of all, all of that information in our files. That's all I have for you. I had uh, gone through and highlighted those <coughs> same things, and uh, Lee, I'm glad, Lee J, I'm glad you uh, responded to all of those. My only question would be is, of Neil would be, or the applicant, is the status of the site location application and DEP applications and <coughs> permit applications. And these documents, our third party report and Lee J's summary, should be provided to DEP, where we're referring to DEP to consider these, these ac actions. Ooh. We make can do that, or they, or they sure can do they, that. Make sure they Absolutely. have that, that we've, we've noted those and calling that to their attention to be the jurisdiction to look at them. I can certainly do that. I'll work with Neil to find out who, you know, who the contact is on the project and yep. send well, them that information. That's okay. right. They're, um, they're, they're uh, just starting the review, actually, this <coughs> week. Uh, uh, got a complete, complete application. There was a few items that they wanted more information on. Uh, before they started the review so we got those to them actually just Tuesday so uh, hopefully I'll be hearing for them as they as they go through the review and if any revisions come up 
we'll be submitting them as they as they come through. We'll be submitting them to the town. And then just one more question, Dave. Um, I did watch the um, superintendent in your presentation on the various school. Oh yes. And the total packages. Um, just want to know if the architects or architect has been picked for the schools because obviously that's going to come back before us once the building is actually in the uses within the building have been defined. Yes, correct. And it's a uh, CHA architects out of uh, Portland, the former uh, Portland design team, okay. uh, the company that, that acquired them. Uh, they're the ones who will be doing the design for uh, all the proposed building expansions throughout okay. the district. Thank so. you. Who's responsible for completing the maintenance agreement for stormwater management facilities every year? For completing it? Yeah. The district is responsible for completing it. Um, they can hire out to have uh, a professional come and do everything. Okay. Um, generally, we've we've worked with you know several homeowners associations, things like that. They prefer to have uh, the design professional come out and, and and look over the maintenance items and tell them what they have to do. Uh, so that's that's generally the way it will go. They have uh, they have a similar uh, requirement for the high school uh, when they got that approved that. <laughs> a lot of the same, mm -hmm. a lot of the same maintenance uh, items on it, and I know uh, Kevin Moore from the school has been you know, well versed in oh, okay. directing the maintenance of all that stuff. Does the town have to trigger that request of them to, for the CEO to have updated to your? <coughs> it should not have be triggered. Now that the, the the school district should be providing that on an annual basis. And do we have a mechanism in play to track and monitor these things that? that come in, come in every two years or whatever the window might be. Okay. We, have a, we have a spreadsheet. Good, thank you. Yeah, um, just as a side note, I mean, this is outside the MS4 area, but I'm sure their spreadsheets probably track those other development projects the same way. Mm -hmm. So it's written the same, same spreadsheet and yeah. depending on, it's a column if it's a yes or a no. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Sean? Um, no, I didn't have anything. Anything else on that? Just the, the maintenance thing is the big issue for me. Yep. It's a lot of we've we tried we tried our best to do you know a lot of low maintenance things, but the site was so tight that some of the things we'll actually have uh, contracts from uh, the you know the proprietary providers in here the, the the little focal point filters that comes with um, I think it's two years of maintenance included with the installation, and then you re up from there. Uh, to either have a professional train someone to do it or to have that company come back and, and do that maintenance. It was just there just wasn't a lot, wasn't enough room to, to do everything in the traditional passive way of buffers and spreaders and things like that. So, Mike? I'm good. David? I'm good. Thank you. So this application was voted complete, so steps ahead here. So it was it was voted complete. That's why you had set the um, date for the site walk, which unfortunately we couldn't do because of the weather and timing. Um, the application will be left open. Um, we did have an initial public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. This is my cough again. Um, the, uh, this evening we'll keep that open, and um, the next step would be once you feel comfortable after the public hearing, close the public hearing, deliberate, and approve the project. Mm -hmm. um, or do whatever you're going to do to it. And um, then they'll just wait for DEP to provide the DEP permit. You won't have to do anything in regards to that once that's done. Yeah, we didn't I, account for daylight savings time. <laughs> are, are we into uh, a meeting conflict with Thanksgiving? What's the planning board's policy been around the holidays? I know. Well, I believe the next meeting is. Uh, is it in plenty of time? Uh, yeah, the be? next meeting is the 21st. Thanksgiving's on the 28th. Okay. Okay. Um, not a I was just wanted to make sure we weren't going to all of a sudden run into something that yeah. would not allow us to act on this. Um, <coughs> what are the next couple of Saturdays? So it's the 9th and the 16th. You don't have a problem coming out on a Saturday, right? I don't know. Okay. Is anybody doing anything this weekend? Supposed uh, to be the sooner the better nice for me. On, the night nice would on be. Saturday. <laughs> I mean, if we get good weather, we might as well take it's advantage gonna, I, of it. From what I see on Saturday, it's going to be sunny but cold. So that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you have Saturday work for you? It's a matter of timing for Saturday, but yeah. Okay. Six o'clock a.m. <laughs> <laughs> sun, sun's, sun's up. Eh, it's barely up. Oh come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. Wait for us, Frank. We'll be there. You think it's ten o'clock? Bring the coffee. <laughs> it's a little late. It's a little oh. late. Yeah, it's a little late. Eight nine. 
eight, nine. Eight, eight, eight or nine. Eight, okay. Eight, yeah. Eight works. Yeah, I can do eight. We're All going right. eight. Eight. Perfect. Eight. Eight Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, for Ten o'clock, Dave. <laughs> 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 it is early. Does that work? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Very Great. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Eight o'clock Saturday. All right. <clears throat> That's it. See you Saturday morning. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is a sketch plan for a major subdivision, Norman Court, map R44, lot 10. It's in the R2 zone, and the applicant is Paul Hollis. I'll turn it over to Lee J. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have not provided you people with a memo on this project, as this is the, I believe, third time that the applicant has been in front of you at sketch level. Um, it is again at sketch simply from the standpoint that, <coughs> excuse me, he was prepared to submit preliminary plans, but we were past the six-month time period in which the ordinance says you have to submit your preliminary plans. Um, so technically, accordingly, we have to go back and go through sketch again um, in order to move to preliminary. And I believe Mr. Hollis just passed some information out to you. Um, in it's the same thing I received. It's a bullet list of items that will occur with the project. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Hollis, or turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, members of the right. board, uh, I've been doing this 30 years. I've never been a conceptual three times, so I apologize. The uh, fact <laughs> of the matter is last year I took on way too much work, and I had to put this on the back burner, even though we, uh, as Lee J., um, stated that we uh, have submitted plans that are pretty much at a preliminary level. Uh, so I'm here to uh, hopefully go through the project, go through the whole process, and subsequently we receive uh, final approval after getting everybody's input. Um, Norman Court, it started out as a 37-acre parcel. Um, we've took part of the parcel and put it into another entity and related to me. We have 15.59 acres uh, that we're looking to develop. Um, it's off of 100, it's 100 Old Pine Hill Road is the address to the property. It's right across from the library. Um, we're proposing a 16-lot cluster subdivision on 15.59 acres. Property is in the R1 and the R2 zone. Uh, the zoning line kind of runs, skirts lot 2. Right down here is the property line that goes from R1 to R2. There's public water and sewer on Old Pine Hill Road. Um, that is available for us to hook up. There is capacity according to the sewer department. Um, we've got two, um, uh, there's an existing roadway. You guys have been up there. I know you had a sidewalk a couple of years ago. Uh, there's about 1,100 feet of paved roadway. Uh, electrical poles running up the whole right side of the property, uh, servicing four homes. Uh, fifth home was added last year over here. Um, we're, able, we're just able to uh, be under our 200 trips per uh, day requirement with our 16 lots. Um, there's two major brooks uh, abutting the property. There's Ferguson Brook and Coffin Brook. Uh, in blue, you see um, the, the brooks are in the center. 75-foot setbacks from each one uh, begins the lots. Um, we're proposing, of course, to extend the underground sewer line, uh, public water line, 8-inch ductile water line, bring an electrical cable and internet, electric cable and internet into the property all the way up the uh, side of the roadway. Uh, we're also proposing a five-foot sidewalk on the right side only. I know those requirements of sidewalks mostly on both sides. Uh, we're asking that uh, uh, we put our sidewalk on one side, two and a half feet of grass area between the curb and the sidewalk. Obviously, uh, during construction, we have to maintain 10 feet of separation between water and sewer on the roadway. Um, the plans that were submitted uh, call off a slip form concrete, six inch curbing on both sides of the roadway. Uh, the road is built to town standards, 24 feet in width, 18 inch sub base uh, type D gravel, top of six inches of crushed aggregate base A gravel, and three and a half inches of asphalt pavement. Um, there's a pump station as designed for the property. The pump station is right. Uh, location is right to the right here over off Ferguson Brook, and there is a roadway extending down to a 
a bio paraphernalia uh, right down here on the property. Can you have him stand on the other side and explain that again real quick? Can you just stand on the other side real quick sure. and show us? There's a pump station proposed right here, full location. That's all bioretention area uh, design. It's part of our plans that were, were submitted. And we're pretty much at preliminary stage, but Lee J just said we, we're primarily here for conceptual. Yep. Um, so that's all been engineered. Uh, there's a dozen sheets of uh, engineering that shows the, the um, retention area and also the pump the detail for the detail for the pump station. Um, there's an, there's an electrical plan for the pump station, also a detail sheet for the pump station. And we need the sewer department, of course, to approve that yep. pump station uh, before we go much further. Mm -hmm. I think Val Jagari has gotten a copy of that. Is she still the uh, review person for the sewer department? As far yes. as we know? Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, so plans have been submitted at a preliminary stage, but of course we're back here for conceptual. Uh, do you feel the need to do another site walk, Mr. Chairman? Yes. You do, okay, because uh, I believe the center line stakes are still in the ground. I'll go up and we check. We have a lot of new people on the board, so I think it would That'd be, be great. It'd be a good yeah. refresher, too. Yeah, we'll do it, and um, and I'll uh, bring the coffee. Um, and, wear orange, the board. and wear orange if we're out there in November, right, on Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, just a couple of questions. The, the quality of these plans that we got were really poor to read. Did, were, did we print these, or did... So when yes, we get going, guessing, yeah. I mean, they're very hard to read. Um, you mean the, the 11 by 17? Yeah, the small reduced ones. I'm sorry. The, I, mean, I, the, I could provide uh, bigger copies of a well, at, set at, like. at some point, but for sketch, I think it's perfectly fine. But um, just a couple questions I had. On the actual application form, uh, you, you did clear that up to say it was an R1, R2 split. You called it an urban residential district. Do we actually... We don't have an urban residential. No. Mm -mm. So that. No, right there. The, the names of the. I think it is. It is? R1. The yeah. Names are, you yeah. Read it. The zoning book refers to it that way. Yeah. yeah. Urban yeah. R1. Or R1. No, 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 R1 is. It says urban residential, correct. You're, okay. Yeah. And transition residential. Okay. Yeah. And then on uh, uh, item 14, page uh, paragraph 14 here, it says total acreage 1.67 acres. And then it says area to be developed 15.59. Is that a typo or a handwritten? It's a typo, sir. Yeah. You can't yeah. understand that. Yeah, it didn't make sense. The other thing what is. What does it say? 1.67? Yeah, it said 1.67 on here. Let's see if there's anything better. Uh, the total open space proposed 5.80 acres, 50% requirement, 2.90 acres minus 1.67 acres of what? 1.67 acres of what? So that's what that is, that's but it shows up as the total acreage. Right. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's wetland. Okay. Uh, there is a wetland impact of 11,245 uh, square feet, which obviously triggers a tier one application. And then I, looking at, I'm looking at s drawing C101, and there appears to be a number, and I colored them in blue just so I could see them. There appears to be a number of areas that aren't lots that are being left that pass through and butt up to open space behind and on and on the property to the to the north of it. See the page? Yeah. Just curious as to all these easement things that are showing here and dead ends. I mean, right, it's a that, uh, I mean from a cluster perspective The road de does dead end into a cold side. But well, from a cluster perspective you've taken into account the entire yeah. land area to develop what our conventional subdivision would right. be, and now you're squeezing it down into the cluster, into cluster division. format. So this. all that land beyond is open. We own the sub of 37 acres. Yeah, so 37 Th that will remain all as open space. Well, we haven't declared that open space yet. For future use. Okay, well that's why it draws my attention to why these things are these things future right of way corridors to get well, into there is those. A right of way corridor coming down. Uh, where am I? Sorry. There's a future corner right away, right down here. Yeah, I saw that one. Right away down yeah. there and stops um, for the future. And then this could also be the future. Decide to. Uh, but there's forward. another one right there in the middle. You've got to keep moving your finger to the right, 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 right. Keep going right, 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 right there. Okay. What's that strip? 
Actually, right. before we even go any further, I just have a question, because the plane that you have up there looks completely different than the one that I have. Well, that's the one he's yeah. using to calculate the, the, the ability to do 16 mm -hmm. lots. Okay, so which one? Which, which one are we looking at? This was the old one. That was the old one. Okay. So this is the new one? Yeah. So don't look at this first page then. I'm not, I haven't even looked at that one yet. This is, the, is this the old one? That seems to be the old one. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the one that was the basis by which you determined you could do 16 lots. So you can do 16 with either design. Right, that's what it is. Right? Okay, you yeah. have to. You had to have that. You have so to show that you, you can get that. 16, so we're not looking, and, right. and now you can condense it down so now to we're shorten not the roads this and meet the. Right. Yeah, we're we're looking at the others. Yeah. 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 That's what I took that one to be. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. no. I'm not it doing was a good refresher today. because I remember <laughs> I we talked about this last time too because you have to show the plan. That's right. Condense it down. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get bogged down on, on this, but as we move forward, obviously I'm going to have some concern as to how these things, what role all these swaths play in. The well, we way. got one dead end. We got one dead end here that dead ends to this cul-de-sac. So if there's ever any future consideration down there, obviously we can't do anything that, once you do a cluster division here, there's so much acres required to do the cluster. Um, so we can't figure this out. So we've stopped right here. This other pathway goes down to the detention area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we drop left that there in case got, if we do a loop, we do a loop and come back. We have a, a another way to cross cross down <coughs> into the two properties. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the two that you're concerned about. Yeah, as we go forward, we'll right. we'll be focusing in on that because we also have a the, the planning board has recently looked at the length of uh, cul-de-sac roads. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Okay, you do that then. Um, my other comment was. Who is the actual applicant? Because NC um, Berwick LLC. But the purchase and sale is for Great Lots of Maine LLC. I own both of them. I own both entities. Okay. Well, you get the two different documents in here versus one cons consistent name through okay. it. So, again, that would just be making sure we're we're operating on the right applicant. I, yes, um, I think the questions that you're all that you're asking and the issues that you're bringing up would suggest that um, <coughs> when he's ready to go to preliminary, we ought to have a whole new packet Correct. Uh -huh. prepared that is done the way it is supposed to be done and submitted to the board. And we'll have one entity on there. Okay. So there'll be no confusion. It's a housekeeping thing and make sure we're consistent. Yep. Thank you. So the applicant, so we're going the, by the applicant name, NC Berwick LLC. Yes. All right. So we should just always refer to it. It's that on the agendas too, James. You know. Um, so who's going to be responsible for that the, that pump? Is the sewer department going to? Well, take eventually, that? Uh, they they'll take control of it. Okay. Yeah. That's what. How we're about called. the road? It's going to it's going to stay. Well, you know, fine. right now I own the roadway. I, is, is 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 the town accept roadways after they're built? Well, let's talk about the roadways. Sure. Let's go back to some of the changes in the land use ordinance with cul-de-sacs and dead ends. Yeah, I think I think the town would be more apt to, as of now, if it's a dead end, no. But you do, you continue the development where it connects the half ringer and comes out. I think they'd be more apt to do so. But as of now, the ordinance is if it's a dead end. No. I can't do what I'm proposing. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> How do I talk? <clears throat> yeah, so, um, no, you can do it. It's just the town accepting the road. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'll stay. Unless, we're, unless we keep it private. Yeah, so you can keep the road. You, you'll have to keep the road private until okay. you kind of have a connection way through. Uh, in other words, the town won't consider. Uh, I'm not sure. That's whole other, that's whole other topic. The town won't consider accepting it unless there's another access out. Right. Okay. Well, let's go to the let's go to the latest land use change that we made. I think it was six months ago. On that, um, is there going to be a homeowners association? There will be if there's a private if the roadways to be private. Yeah, and you know, it, if the pump station is maintained by the sewer department. Right, and if the roadway stays private, of course we're going to have to put a private set of covenants on the subdivision, and it's going to have to be maintained by an association. 
is there is, there's no uh, common spaces in this neighborhood not uh, not has proposed I mean there's open space I mean we're gonna have to come up with a management plan for the open space that's there which will be simple uh, not to touch it per se unless there's a trail or anything running through it that somebody might want to uh, go through there but I don't think so um, so who's we'll, going we'll to gonna maintain that open space? I'm sorry? Who's going to maintain that open space? Well, the association will have to uh, right. maintain an open space with right. rules and regulations like any other so open you, you space in a private. definitely have to have an association, yeah. even if, the, even if the, the town takes the road. I believe so. Okay. And does the town tax that land as open space and everyone gets one sixteenth of the bill? Does anybody know that? No. I think that I think the association will get the tax bill, and that'll be part of the budget for the for each homeowner. It's almost the same thing. Okay. Yeah, we'll find out what the taxes might be on that open space, and then when we pre prepare the budget for the private homeowners association, that'll be part of it. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for the inconsistency of ownership. It's all right. Paul just... made me do it. Would you like to schedule a site walk, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, absolutely. Let's just let's just answer about, that how question. About Saturday first. morning at nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> subdivision section. Which uh, page is that? Um, it's in subdivision. It's on. It's in Article Twelve, page nine of Article Twelve. I don't have, this, <coughs> I don't have that subdivision bags. So. Okay. Basically, under cul-de-sacs, um, it says. And I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll get to the, to the area it talks about. The board may require streets to be connected if cul-de-sacs are located less than 600 feet apart as measured from the center of the cul-de-sac or the entrance to a dead-end street is within 600 feet. Um, I don't see anything in here that says what the length of a cul-de-sac could be. I thought it was 1,100, no, 1,600 feet. This is 1748 to the end. So basically you would need to request as part of the preliminary application a waiver okay. for the planning board to take action to consider whether or not they want to allow that cul-de-sac. Um, Again, I think because this is at sketch, you know, one of the things that would help in moving a waiver on that forward would be showing, um, at least in conceptual idea, the rest of the subdivision um, so that they could see that a road would be punched back through in order to loop it. Um, short of that, I think, well, it's the board's call, but they've got to decide whether or not they want to allow that cul-de-sac to occur because um, there's no guarantee at all that, that that other road will ever get built. And so the town could be, even though it's private, um, from a standpoint of emergency vehicle access and whatnot, the town could be left with a 1,700-foot dead-end road. Is there a dead-end road restriction, EJ? Well, that's what I have been looking for. Uh, and cannot seem to find anything that states that. But isn't that what Steve, aware of it. isn't that what Steve Clements did between That's Route Nine and Cemetery Road? He went halfway from both ends, and then he connected the two in the middle. So he actually had showed he had a completed <coughs> thorough. Cor yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a concept for, for connection right now. Plan. Yeah, yeah, he showed the the full layout um, and has built. Two From two ends, ends and then tied the. Yet. Correct. Yep. I believe the town plows the other end, though. The town plows one end of that. Because the town probably accepted part of it. Because it takes a vote of the town meeting to accept a road. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let me ask one more question. If it's a private road, the school bus won't go down it, correct? Correct. Well, those kids are just going to have to walk to the corner. Well, that's what they did. They put a, I mean, I forget the name of the that's project, Carriage Run or something. They, they had to put yeah. a school bus stop down there. And the mail was the same way. Yep. The mail wouldn't go down there, so they had a central mail. Yeah, we'd probably put a, so, a box in the, in the beginning. In the, in yep. the beginning. Probably just costing me so much money, anyways. I might as well just buy a bus and have that. It, it's just that by <laughs> it, just by it being a private road, though, it throws in all these other things. Well, but the mail, the mail issue. Like, I live on Elmwood. We get our mail to the house. Kids can walk. I, I might be dating myself back a number of years, but, but they would never go down there. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Yeah, we, the town doesn't own our roads. Doesn't Length. take care of just our road. Oh. our side of the heritage or whatever it is, the private, is not. Mm -hmm. Run by the, not cared for by the town, and the mail is delivered to your door. Comes to the mailbox, yeah. So James just did a, a word search on the computer within the ordinance, um, and he came to the same section that I did. Um, there is nothing that stipulates um, length of cul-de-sac. It just talks about um, the two cul-de-sacs can't be more than 600 feet apart, which is kind of an odd. That is thing. a little odd, um, but the. The older ordinance, I remember, had a, had a length, and it also had the maximum number of units you could have on it. Um, well, this... Well, Obviously, it was a frontage ordinance. thing anyway. It was a calculation based on... If you have two cul-de-sacs, they can't be 600... More than 600 feet apart. Okay. Well, how, does that apply to me? No. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, it's right in Article 12 of the Subdivision Ordinance, page 9. It's the only section on cul-de-sacs. Dead end streets is dead end streets, and it says cul-de-sacs and hammerheads. It's not in a definition section. Cul-de-sac shall be known. I would I would hope a standard is not in the definition. Yeah, I would section. hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. <clears throat> well, we're looking this um, up. Did we want to plan a site walk, and when? I guess, it, what, what's out there? Just the center line of the road? I mean, the pump station location noted, is it, is it stake? I can, I can identify it. Is the drainage lines where it's going to break down through, these access roads? Um, I guess you, you've, you've walked it once, right, Dave? It was a couple years ago, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But, uh, I mean, I can, I can go out there and I can approximate where the pump station is going to be. Uh, I can pretty much approximate where the end of the road is going to yeah. be. Uh, but can't do much more than that. What's the, the survey come what's out. the foliage out there? Is it pine trees or leaf trees? Um, it's not too bad. I mean, I'm just thinking further into the fall here <laughs> and everything falls off and give you a real good visual. I mean, not not to piggyback two site walks this, this weekend, but buy some time and push it out before first snow, which is tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Be out there with snowshoes. Well, we've, we've done site walks with yeah. snow. <laughs> What do you, how long is it going to take you to put, you know, just put some markers out? And it wouldn't take much at all, Mr. Chairman, for me to go out there early and do it. You know. I mean, the center line is, is all staked. Uh, I'll go back to check it to make sure that the center line is staked. And I can, st I can stake out where that sewer pump station is going to be and where that access roadway is going to be. Have you picked an engineer to do all your work now? Or oh, yeah, you? Okay. Atlantic Resources. Okay. I mean, we've submitted... Uh, we've submitted all the engineering. Well, not all of it, but probably 90% of it uh, to start to look at the review. Pump station design, electrical plans, uh, water and sewer plans. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 14 pages of engineering plans. <coughs> I can show you the set of the Please, do you have something? Did you want to say something? No. Nope. Oh, okay. No, nope. I'm, I'm okay. I see. Okay. They're out of Freeport. They're out of Freeport. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with them. Jason Vafiatis. All right, so we're not acting tonight. We're not going to play, plan the site walk yet, then, is what, we're, is what we've decided. Uh, yeah, I'd Give you some time to it. stake things off. Okay. Well, it might be at the next meeting, like on the 21st. Like, should I come back on the 21st and say well, we yes? Could we, could, we, could do, we, we could do it on the 16th. We could do it on Saturday the 16th. Yeah. We, That's great. We could do it before we meet next. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I'll get everything ready, and I'll call James and tell him that I have it set, that I have the staking. It's Saturday the 16th at 8 o'clock? Uh, 8 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Somebody bringing coffee and donuts to these events. Is that What's going on? Eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I, got, I, got, I had to get up early. Okay, I, I live about an hour away. Would you be able to have uh, a different, a new set of plants for everybody too? I will. Color and all that by then. I will. Yeah. So we and could take it. it and we could walk around. Yeah, I, and I'll have a, uh, I'll, I'll get a half a dozen bigger set of plants. Yeah, because you, like, you can't read any of the. You can't read anything on these. I mean, I'll just take a full set of plants and make a half a dozen copies. Okay, uh, that would be great. And uh, perfect. All right. I'm sorry. That's okay. Sure. Right. Right. See you on the 16th. I'll call James and give him the update on the staking. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got my weekends, Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me? <laughs> You're not a hunter, are you? No. <laughs> I have an orange hat. So. Uh, I, next I on the agenda orange, is the so. conditional use app. It's a conditional use application for a medical marijuana storefront at 2 Bow Street, map U4, lot 49. It's in the SCI zone, and the applicant is Williams Henry LLC. I'll turn it over to Lee J. Great. And I do have a memo for you on this. Um, proposal. <coughs> Excuse me. Williams Greenery LLC is seeking to establish a medical cannabis store in front of in a uh, storefront in the CI and Village Overlay Zone. The applicant has not requested any waivers of the submission requirements at this time. The ap applicant packet does have a bullet list of information pertaining to hours of operation and what will or will not be changing about the site in order to accommodate the use as part of the application packet. As part of the submitted plan, as part of the submitted plan, um, the rooms are noted as secured inventory area and a display area. There is not a lot of information pertaining to the security of the site, how the area will be secured and what type of systems will be in place um, both inside and outside of the building. 8.25.5 security needs to be approved by the police chief. Article 8.25 of the zoning ordinance includes a number of issues that the board may want to discuss with the applicant like 8.25.4, which is odor control, which has not been discussed with the submittal. Well, I understand that none of the act activities listed in this section of the ordinance are proposed. It is important to get this on the record as well. Um, one other issue that should be considered as part of the application pertains to the entrance location, and I have not seen anything that suggests there will be handicap accessibility. Um, under next steps, the next step would be to find the application complete, determine if you need um, a site visit, and set a date for a public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. On the completeness issue, I'm not sure how the board wants to handle this. They have technically submitted everything required on the checklist. I am, however, going to leave adequacy of the site plan up to the planning board to determine if additional information um, needs to be submitted. And the recommendation would be short of determining if there is any specific conditions the board may want to place, place, on, the, place on this application. I would see no problem with approval once the board is prepared to take action on the plan. Wait, can I just ask you guys back there? We're trying to. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hello? Hey guys. Hello, guys back there. I'm sorry. It's just very distracting. Uh, we just didn't get to ask any questions before, so we were just wanted a couple quick ones. Okay. I can. Uh, I, can <coughs> I can bring you folks into the comments room next door, and then you guys can hash it out if you want. Come on, come on next door. Yeah, just have a couple quick questions for all two because it's coming right through. I'll dive right in. And then I didn't even realize that other piece was still for sale. So we just okay. No Thank problem. You. All right. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Lee J. Um, have the applicant come on up. <coughs> it's a good thing I speak loud. <laughs> good evening. My name is William Stofan, and I'm trying to open up a medical marijuana store over here on Two Bow Street, which I do grow, grow my uh, grows right here in Berwick too. And I just and on the uh, smell and that there's no odor in a store. I mean, when you go in marijuana, which I believe you people have been to the grow rooms, and we have them canisters to keep the smell down. But I don't believe I need anything such as that. And, yeah, most stuff store. should be contained and Everything's sealed. contained, yeah. yes. 
Do and I'm just, you know, trying to get. Are you, are you open for people to just walk in off the street, or is it by appointment only? Some's going to be appointment. Some will walk in. I've gone to the ones in, like in South Portland, Portland. And when you walk in there, there might be two people. And nobody's going to be there. Maybe 10 minutes. They leave. I've been into the ones in Biddeford. People go in, buy their product, their medicine, and then they leave. This is all new to me. Um, <clears throat> what do people have to show that they can get medical marijuana? Is there a prescription? Do they have a card that IDs them? Do yeah, they have everyone a... Everyone has a card. I mean, the state, I believe, is going to be changing some of that. Mm -hmm. But we have to follow the rules from the state. So they're photo ID cards and... Oh, they're little square cards. For the picture? No, no picture. picture. Just names. Just names. Just name. Do you ask for an ID when... Well, you, yeah, you don't want any minors in there. I mean, you, but, you're not going to sell it unless they get a medical marijuana well, card. But I, I walk in there, I'm obviously not a minor, and I have a card that has a name on it, but if I don't have a driver's license to show that that matches my card, I mean, do you do, do, you do that kind of an ID check? Oh, I haven't seen that yet, but I mean, if that's what it takes, you're going to have to. I've been following everything that the state has well, asked I'm me. I'm sure to that's do. a provision of the, the state would be putting that kind of a provision. No. Nope, not no. yet. I, I am yeah, really I mean, new as, to this. As long as you have a medical card, you can. It, that's, that's your validation. You don't need a driver's uh -huh. license to prove it. But how do you prove that it's your card? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. You have to go to a can of care doctor to get a card. But you, could, or your but, you own could, doctor. but you could hand me your card. Yeah, oh. 14 Frank could. Underwoods could go in there. I could, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> what are the hours of operation? I believe I have been there from 10 to 8. Where does that say that? Must be in that bullet. I don't have that bullet point. Oh, it's in the book. Oh, here it is. Okay. Got it. Hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Where, where is that, Mr. Chairman? It is on, it's just before the quick claim deed. It's mm. on the final page. Uh, if you, mom, so like the third page. This is proposed business use. Under E, <coughs> E dot B. Questions from the board? So we would need to, um, well, first we would have to vote the application complete if we think that it is complete, um, and then set up a public hearing. So we just brought up those issues with the completeness, but like we talked about, it's essentially just the, uh, the odor control, which right. should be all right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as everything's sealed up. Sealed yeah. Yeah. I was going to bring some samples so you could see it. I was packaged. working late and yeah. I, I didn't run back to the. Now, will you be, um, will it be packaged before it gets there or are you <laughs> going to yeah, package it there? It'll be packaged. Okay. All right. I didn't know that you own that building. 
<laughs> I was wondering why you were here tonight. <laughs> I just wanted, just, yeah, wanted to come hang out. I didn't. I had no idea. This is the same spot where the accountant was, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's okay. Right across the street. It's the upstairs, and there the barber shop is still downstairs. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So, like I said, application completeness. We have to vote on that this evening. I move that the application is complete. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Why is this I'll so second it. Okay, motion and a second. Further discussion on application completeness. All in favor? Okay. Abstain. Abstaining, okay. Um, and then we have to set a um, public hearing. So we could do the public hearing. Uh, what did we say our next meeting was? Three. Let me just make sure. Yeah, 14 days from now. First. And James, when I get my notebook back, can you put that in it? Because I picked up my notebook two weeks ago, so I didn't have the complete. Yeah, slow down, Frank. Yeah. I'll talk to James after. <coughs> I sent you a. Never mind. You're right. Uh, yeah, you sent it to me on my. Yeah, I. Yeah. Does the 21st of I'm a tree this guy. month work for you at 6:30 for a public hearing? Yes. Okay. It gives you enough time to notice it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Have a nice evening. You as well. I like to write notes all over the paper, James. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the findings of fact for the conditional use application for the parking facility at 71 Sullivan Street. Map U3, lot 11 in the CI zone. The applicant was the town of Berwick, so we never got to approve this before. I had a chance to look through it. Yeah, right on the first page there, though, is it 51 or 68 spaces? 68. It says 51 on. Oh, all right. James, you'll need to change that. It's, okay. it, is, it, is the six, it is the 68, I right? That's, yes, that's what they... Uh, yeah, the first, the first page. Yeah, the second paragraph. Do we still have 68 after they redesigned that? 68 what? Spaces. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was the final was, I think it was. 68 spaces. Could you change that? Yeah. The, I mean, it's not on the signature page, so. And then just an easy. one other point of where I wanted to know. I, I know we ended up with the third party uh, review for the drainage. Yes. And I didn't, I didn't attend that meeting that night. I had submitted it to Dave, and Dave read it into the, into the record, mm -hmm. my, my uh, email that I had sent, and that's yes. fine. But if you looked at the McGroom the the loan loan McGroom. Yep. report yep. for the underdrain, they had listed three options. Yep. And when I had sent my note to Dave, I had said that I was in favor of the option three, which was to tie it all the way into the storm line. Correct. Should our findings of fact ha have picked one of the three options that we wanted them to do? Because obviously, if we believe in one over the other two, should we be specific in recommending that that's what they do? It's been a while ago, but my recollection is that there was discussion on that at the meeting that night, and they decided to just go with the, with the outfall and the... Uh, I, I, I know that. And then I sent everything off to Todd afterwards, and because he said, at the earlier meeting, he said they'd have to have a catch basin and a whole nine yards. And, right. And, my thought was is where this thing is possibly tracking because of the butters and this, that, and the other, that we should put as whatever we can for belt and suspenders on this thing, at least be on the record that mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we were trying to address that underground flow, water flow condition. Right. I, uh, I, again, I mean, I think the board discussed that yeah. and went with the, the outfall, <coughs> excuse me, into the um, riprap. Into the riprap. Yeah. It, does it reflect that in the minutes? I don't think it actually. I don't, I don't think know, it reflects I don't know it. what the minutes reflect. Because if we nailed, if we picked one of the three, the findings of fact, I would think should tell that, identify that as the one the board picked. Well, I think that was the direction we went was with the to the riprap because yeah. to go to the catch basin, we would have had to get into the road and 
and dig up the road and Correct. tie into that. So we wouldn't have to. Well, that would have to be done. Correct. So I think that was a major factor in not going okay. that direction. Just thinking that down the road, if anything does actually get built out on that lot 71 of substance, there's going to be a lot more that's going to have to go into drainage and well, runoff well, and control. I, I, and I couldn't agree with you more. And if something of substance does get developed there, I'm assuming it's going to be over 3,000 square feet and it's going to need to come back to this board. Site and there's going to be a full that, yeah. review done yeah. and lots so of So we changes. had another bite of the apple to have them drop that in down, Correct. tie it in, and Absolutely. Yes, pick it up in a couple of the spots. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Just a small little thing, James, here on page five. It's granite is with an E. Sure. Yeah. Not. Yeah. I okay. see that. Who that was it? my typo. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> but he's going to fix it because right. he's got the word doc. It's on page two oh, yeah. also. Spell check granite. Three Spell check thing. doesn't, it didn't. It didn't you could have added the word in I would have right clicked it and accepted it. DJ, <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of towns to work for, you know? Oh, so, well, we still have to vote on this. <laughs> I move that we accept the, is that what we're doing, moving to accept the finding or approve yes. the findings of fact for yes. 71 Sullivan Street. Okay, we have a motion. I'll okay. second. And seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Would you like to speak a public comment session? Did you? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any informational items from the um, from the board or from staff? How did that How did that workshop session on the marijuana play out? That people went to with the lawyers. Oh, what? Wasn't that the one in Sanford? There was well, no, well, there was a, a lawyer there. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, our our, our lawyer, um, SMPDC's attorney, um, was there with me. Um, you know the the thing was I don't know how it got misconstrued I mean the workshop was on many things not just mm -hmm. marijuana uh, marijuana was only but one factor but a lot of people were like um, the town of Lebanon sent like five people thinking it was all about marijuana um, the workshop went great I think there were a lot of questions about marijuana um, we spent more time talking about Robert's rules than marijuana probably probably um, um, so I mean I I thought it was great we had well, 80 had signed up for the workshop, mm -hmm. um, but we tried to, we were concerned about the number of people coming, so we let folks know that it was going to be streamed, um, thanks to the town of Sanford. Um, and so I think there were about 50, 50 people that showed up, um, and there were a number that streamed, uh, watched on streaming that night. So it was, it was very well attended. Good. Um, <clears throat> while I've got the floor here in front of you, you do have your new land use law books that SMPDC does put together. Um, so the town was gracious enough to purchase enough for you folks. Thank you. Um, this is what, $15 each, right? $15 a piece. Don't lose it. It's, it's a, I, I think it's a great tool. I think um, I have like four of them now for every year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I go through a lot keep of Keep it on my so nightstand. I keep like five of them. Wake up at two in the morning and I'm just like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Light reading. Uh, my wife's like, what are you doing? Just a, just another um, tidbit from from this board, uh, for this board. Oh, no. Um, don't tell us. Why. No. Why? Okay. <laughs> We're, SMPDC is growing. We've um, retained another um, part-time planner um, who's a contract planner um, to help pick up some of the slack because we are very, very busy. And we're hiring a full-time sustainability person. Um, right now, it's a it's a um, pilot project. Um, six communities are kicking in um, some a lot of additional money to pay for this person's time um, for the next two years. Um, but of course, if any other communities want to get on that bandwagon and do sustainability, we can certainly talk to the community um, about doing that. So I just throw that out there. All right. Sustainability includes carbon footprint issues mm -hmm. and energy consumption and trash consumption and all of those other factors that go into uh, environmental concerns these days. So. I think it'd be great to get an inventory of you know, like an estimate ballpark of what Berwick's carbon footprint is and then 
you know, long, long range goal of. We can talk. Of we can talk. <laughs> Some of us sat in on the listening session last evening with the people across the way here. And one of my takeaways, and I kind of liked it, I mean, a lot of the questions that people are asking are deal with transparency and communication and how do we find out about this, that, and the other. But what I also liked is it sounds like they would be more willing to work in workshop sessions kind of a thing or in smaller groups as they sort through things so that now when you do go to the public forum, you've, you've educated a, a large number of, well, well, a small number of people that will get the word out what you're talking about. So I think as that thing goes forward over there, there's going to be a lot of time that we can spend gaining in, in, in learning and working with our overlay ordinance district to, to make that thing work with this group. I was very positive, I thought, what they were saying. So. Form-based, yeah, the form-based. Uh, Correct. Yep. That we worked very hard on. I'm hoping that when they finally come to, a, you know, we're finally going to approve something, we can have the <coughs> meeting upstairs in the auditor, the planning board meeting up there, and pack the place. That's hopefully. Can we sit on the stage? Can we put our chairs on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> what was the head count that last evening? Close to 100. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Very good. Yeah, that was a good crowd. Where's the panic button, by the way? It's not here anymore. Is he panicking? No, I'm just feel a little in the closet. Okay. That's a good place for Anybody it. Anybody else have anything for this evening? <laughs> Next on the agenda would be the adjournment. I motion that we adjourn tonight, November seventh meeting. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor?